All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I am the priest Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch. And I'm coming to you all with another lesson through the spirit. Lord's will, this lesson here will be edifying. And what I want to go into today is going to be crazy faith. We're approaching the time right now in prophecy. I mean, as we obviously see tons of prophecy coming forth into play. I mean, literally prophecy is falling off the pages right now. We see the mandates happening. We see uh, people's jobs on the line and all in all, we see an all out attack on integrity. But the beautiful thing about all of this is the fact that as our integrity is on the line, we have the opportunity and the chance to show forth this crazy faith that was prophesied was going to come into pass. And we obviously have been seeing the awakening of this crazy faith coming to come to pass. I mean, it takes a lot of faith to go out into the highways and the hedges in the midst of your enemies and tell them to their face that they're going to be destroyed and that a new kingdom is coming up. It takes a lot of faith to dedicate your lives and put forth your old man, your old woman, whoever you are, to the side and be reawakened unto this new being that you've been created to be. It takes a level of faith to really sit here, study these scriptures, listen to these shows, and in the midst of all this that's going on, to not be distracted by the negativity and the witchcraft and sorcery, but to be laser focused and have your eyes single. It takes a lot of faith to watch these videos and certain videos you watch might have about three views, 10 views, 100 views, 1,000 views versus all these people that are out here that have such notoriety that might have a million views, two million views. For example, the T.D. Jakes and the Creflo Dollars and these different, you know, Afrocentric Egyptology people that have all this notoriety. But when you look at where the truth is coming from, it's coming from a very humble platform, very humble page. And it takes a lot of faith for you to watch us in the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and point out that these men are telling the truth. It takes a lot of faith in order to dedicate your lives toward this ministry. And call Halal Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai for the amount of faith that he had bestowed upon us. But where I'm getting to is the fact that this faith of a mustard seed that has been sown is definitely growing into a full-fledged sycamine tree. And we're in the process of uh, seeing something very great. We're literally in the midst of a lot of greatness being taken place. And best believe as Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, as Yahweh Shai's name has been exalted, it's about to be exalted on a whole nother level here within the very near future. All right. Once these mandates really start hitting, once people start losing their jobs and this detaching really starts taking place, you're going to see a lot more glory of the Heavenly Father be revealed. And that's through the sun. Okay. Let me turn these notifications off. And that leads me to this precept that I want to start this lesson off on. And it's going to be in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, starting at verse 28. And it reads, as for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome and truth, which hath been so long without fruit, shall be declared. And we're seeing that. And it's not only being declared, but it's being declared in a very bold fashion. All right. Very bold fashion. And it's only going to get bolder. And when you look at something that's flourishing, you think of a flower. All right. In a flower, even when you go into the name of um, flower, and um, and uh, I believe in Spanish, I believe it's pronounced flor, if I'm not mistaken. If and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's either in uh, it's in, uh, either in Latin or Spanish. You pronounce the word um, flower as flor, all right, which is short for uh, which is short for flourish, all right. And you're seeing that as you see on the left hand side, pride budding, all right. The harvest is is getting ripe, all right. On the right hand side, you see faith being perfected all right even as our lord yahweh made the statement saying all right 
um, loosely paraphrasing out of the mouth of babes shall shall uh, praise be perfected. And we're seeing that being done in individuals that you would not expect the 100 percent truth to come from. And the same thing applied even with our Lord Yahweh Shai and those men that followed him. People didn't expect the truth to come from somebody who was such of a lowly manner, a low degree. Back then they expected it to come from those nobles, those leaders of the law, those scribes, those Pharisees, Sadducees, those lawyers, those men that had dressed in those in the, the, the so-called righteous apparel. And even today there are certain people that give off that facade. Of being this guy that has all this faith because of the three-piece suit that he comes in. Or the amount of millions and millions of followers that they have. But it takes a true eye, a, a true believing eye, a special eye to be able to spot out where the true source is coming from. We've been blessed with that. Alright? Hey, it's even written of in Isaiah, thy eye shall see thy teachers. And thy teachers shall not be removed from thy corners. When you look at a lot of these major platforms, a lot of these platforms that get the million views, you see how they're easily compromising their integrity and lying to their uh, congregation. Even with today, what's going on right now with the with the stabbing jab, you know, what I'm saying with the juice. All right. They're pushing that narrative on all their people. And as our Lord Yahweh Shai said, as the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall into a ditch. And we're seeing that right now. All right. Now. I know I said I was going to go into crazy faith, and it's a reason why I wanted to start off in 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 28. Like, literally, out of all these things that are happening on the planet Earth right now, our mind needs to be set, I mean, on many things. But one of those things that our minds need to be set on before I to be single is uh, even miracles, because miracles are coming, too. I was listening to the elder in our camp, Yashawamba, and he, done, he had done um, a very edifying lesson going into the manna. Falling down from heaven in the time that we were in the wilderness. And I believe you can find that account around numbers 11 or 13. If I'm not mistaken, um, and if, if, if I'm wrong, one of you all can correct me, hopefully, on the comment board. But no, it's in numbers where it goes into how the, 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 the manna was the color of the coriander. Um, it was like the coriander seed in the color of delium. You can find that in numbers. And when you go into that account, Jake was murmuring and such. And the Lord still blessed those men with manna and then later on blessed them with quail after they had murmured for wanting meat and Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai had did that for a group of people that were very ungrateful so how much more do you apply it for a generation that have not seen a sign that have not seen the things that our fathers have seen but strictly believe it's written of in Hebrews 11 and 6 he that come to the most high must believe that he is and he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him right so going back to the elders lesson, he had touched up on that. And really, the general understanding that I had received from it was not to fret, not to worry, even though if you look at it from a fleshly perspective, it's very easy to fret and worry. And we even see these people in the spirit of fretting and worrying. All right. When you look out the window, when you look at your jobs, all these people that were gun gun held or not getting the stab and jab, the juice. You know, now that their jobs are on the line, their integrity is on the line, they fold like a lawn chair. And this is only the beginning of sorrows. But they are looking at this from a worldly perspective because that's all they've been groomed up to see. All right. It's even written up in Second Ezra, the fifth chapter. Matter of fact, I'm already in Second Ezra six. So I'm going to go to a chapter prior. Nevertheless, Second Ezra five and one. Nevertheless, as coming the tokens, behold, the days shall come. That they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. But iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. So we're in the process right now of really seeing how these people, starting with you, is these Israelites that are out here, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, literally how they're literally barren of faith. All right. They are barren of faith. They are lacking an immense amount of faith. And also seeing this is clearly showing us that faith definitely is a gift. Now, we've said it before and we have believed it before as we believe it today. But our eyes have been blessed enough to actually see all this manifest and the understanding is being brought out like, wow, OK, I see what you're talking about. 
There's a lot more scriptures that are popping like popcorn now in these days. As these prophecies are coming into effect, as the vision that was set for an appointed time is speaking right now, now we're seeing, mm, I got it before, but I even get it a lot more now. And we're very um, benefited and very blessed to even see it in this way. Because the masses of our people cannot receive this. Even people that claim themselves to be spiritual. People that claim themselves to be religious. People that claim themselves to be good old Christians. They are running right to the beast. But we have faith. And that faith is only going to flourish. Miracles are coming, y'all. Miracles are coming. Miracles are here and happening every day. These prophecies coming to pass are miracles. But watch and continue to grow in your faith. The more your faith grows, at the end of the day, it's all according to the spirit of the Heavenly Father. But the more your faith grows and flourishes, the more things you can expect to take place. Okay? I was reading this in the book of um, Mark, the 11th chapter. And it's something that I've been meditating on for the past few days now. But the spirit is now moving me to do this lesson. And this account here is going into our Lord Yahweh Shai and how he had actually healed that deaf man. And when I was reading this, just looking at how he moved and how he would speak to people before they would heal, he would heal them. Or the situations that were presented before those miracles took place, kind of paying attention to it in detail, you know, because even the detail says a lot. But when you read this here in the book of Math, I'm sorry, Mark, the 11th chapter. And um, I mean, I want to start at a good point. I want to go into when Yahweh Shai had healed that deaf man. Because even how he moved and how he did it was a very unique way. But the miracle was done. Let me find it really quick. Because we're in the time right now. Hey, the scripture's saying, and if the Lord's willing, the spirit stays on me to quote this precept in Psalms 110. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. And we always say how we're in the time of Acts. And during the time of Acts, a lot of things was happening, but even those miracles was coming to pass in a very magnificent way. And the name of Yahweh was being glorified in a way that it has never been glorified before in a long time. And we are in those times right now. OK, so I'm going to read this here in the book of. Uh, let's see here. I'm sorry, I said Mark, I said Mark 11. I thought it was in Mark 11. Let's see here. Bear with me one second. Let me look this precept up. I could have sworn it was in Mark 11. I was studying this earlier today. Yeah. Apologies, y'all. It's in Mark 11, starting at around chapter 22. And this is going into the account of when our Lord Yahweh Shah had, had um, healed that uh, deaf man. And I'm sorry. No, it's not Mark 11. Bear with me. Let's see here. Forgive me, it's in Mark the 7th chapter. All right. So this is the book of Mark chapter 7. And I'm going to start around verse 32. And again, keep in mind crazy faith. Okay, I did a lesson some months back going into the crazy faith that it took those two individuals carrying that paralyzed man on that couch to climb up a roof, tear a hole open in the ceiling, drop him down and be healed. That's crazy faith. It took crazy faith for the Apostle Peter to step out into that water and stand on the water before that boisterous wind came. That's crazy faith. OK. It took crazy faith for our Lord Yahweh Shah to be crucified for the whole nation of Israel. All right. But this is the flourishing of faith. And we're in the time of the flourishing of faith, the blossoming of faith. OK. This is the book of Mark, chapter seven. And I'm going to start at verse 31. And it reads, and again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. Because you know how those people that are deaf, they can't really speak correctly. OK, those deaf people, they, they have those speech impediments because they can't hear the words that they're saying. It says a speech impediment in his speech and they beseeched him to put his hands upon him. All right. So they had begged Yahweh Shai to put his hands upon this deaf man to heal him. All right. Verse 33. And he took him aside.
from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and spit and touched his tongue. Okay. And looked up to heaven and sighed and said unto him, Apathach. All right. Which is translated, be open. All right. So you can sit back and imagine. And Yahushai did it a very unique way. He did it in a very strange way. He didn't just do it the normal, you know, way that you would think that it would be done just to say be healed. No, he, from the sounds of it, I'm even going to read it in the NLT version. It says, Yahawashai led him away from the crowd so they could be alone. He put his finger into the man's ears. Then spitting on his own finger, he touched the man's tongue. Because remember, the man was deaf and he had a speech impediment. And this just shows you the, the, the divinity in our Lord Yahweh Shai, the very strange, unique way he did it. He sit back and close your eyes and imagine that. It's a deaf person sitting in front of you and they in the process for them to be healed. You stick your finger in their ear, spit on, spit on your finger and touch their tongue. All right. Because, again, his ear represented him being deaf and the tongue represented him being so-called dumb or having the speech impediment. All right. So Yahweh Shai did it in a very unique, strange way. Now check this out. And looking up to the heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Apathach, that is be opened. And straightway his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plainly. Can you imagine that? Can you picture that? And this is only one of the many miracles that our Lord Yahweh Shai did. But even Yahweh Shai said it in John the 14th chapter, Thou shalt do greater works than I because I go to my father. All right. But the only way to ask in that level of boldness and belief. All right. Is having faith and not doubting. Not even entertaining. Not even entertaining the thought of your mind. Like if it don't happen, it's OK. Which is not a wicked thought. It's not a wicked thought at all. But as I mentioned in a previous lesson that was done. What's that compared to just. Asking for the Lord's will to be done and believing it's going to take place. And if it don't happen later on, so be it. It is what it is. It's not his will. But having the faith that it will happen. That's what Yahweh Shai was stressing to those men. To believe. And he even showed them in a very unique way. Stuck his finger in his ear. Took it out. Spit on his finger and touched the man's tongue. A lot of people would have been like, ew. Which shows you the level of faith that that deaf man had. He looked past the mortal and the carnal. He looked past the fact that this man spit on his own finger and touched his tongue. That's some crazy faith right there if you ask me. That is ridiculous faith. I'm going to say this. It takes a lot of faith to watch a grown man's feet. That's been sojourning and walking. Crazy faith. But this was their expectation and they believed that he is. We in the time right now where the Lord is doing a very mighty work. And even that precept that, that I just read about, that miracle, you know, that was written of in Isaiah 35. And Yahweh Shai fulfilled it right there. Showing Yahweh Shai fulfilled the law. But it's also written of in 2 Ezra, the second chapter, going into those men that were crowned, that Yahweh Shai was crowning all of them, uh, crowning all of them. When Ezra asked and marveled, who are these? He said, these are they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal. These are they that had fulfilled the law of their God. Part of the fulfilling of the law is fulfilling of certain of these prophecies that's required for the remnant to fulfill. As our Lord Yahweh Shai had fulfilled it. Okay. And part of that are the miracles that are going to take place. Miracles are ha about to happen. They're already happening. But by the hands of men, this is about to take place. And Yahweh Shai constantly was telling his disciples to believe, to believe and only believe. All right. And when it comes into miracles, when you read about these accounts, yes, Yahweh Shai had the faith to do it, but he always left it to that person's faith. That's why he always said, your faith had made you whole. Your faith had did this. Your faith had done that. OK, we're in the time right now to remove doubt. Remove the doubt. Don't entertain the doubt. When the doubt comes, dismiss the doubt. May the Lord increase our faith. Okay? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 35. And I'm going to start at verse 4.
And it reads, I'm going to start at verse three. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. All right. And how is this done? It starts with the gospel being preached because with, the, with this gospel being preached, we had rose up. We had risen up an exceedingly great army as is read of in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. All right. You can also read it in Isaiah 61 going into how the gospel is a liberating message to liberate us from the bonds and constraints that we've been in. All right. Verse four says this. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even the most high with the recompense. He will come and save you. Remember the times that we in. Yo, the end all be all. The end all be all of this is of, of this is not Esau's kingdom coming to a collapse and you collapsing with it. This is what we've been talking about for a long period of time. And all we're seeing is it coming to pass. The end all be all ain't, ain't the grocery stores closing. You not be able to go from city to city, whatever the case is. No, this is something major taking place. And in the midst of that, for the for us, that's been preaching, starting with our apostles, our elders, y'all that believe, y'all that give alms, y'all that teach. Best believe the Lord ain't going to leave you stranded. You've been sacrificing your life. You've been being a martyr, starting with the prophets, starting with the prophets. All right. They're going to re reap the heaviest reward. OK. Putting our lives on the line, that's martyr, that's martyrdom right there. There's a reward that's coming for that. All right. Verse five says this, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be stopped. All right. Now, Yahweh actually fulfilled that. He had actually did that, I'd rather say. OK, not that it's not going to be done again. But you can read about that account in the book of Mark, the seventh chapter, where Yahweh Shah actually did that. And then what did he do? He yelled up in the heavens and said, Apathak, which means be open, right? It says, and the ears of the dead shall be unstopped. When you go into that word unstopped here in the Hebrew, that word is pronounced pathach, which means what? Opened. And Yahweh Shah did that. All right, after the God, during him preaching the gospel, he was performing those miracles. Wondrous works was being done. We're in a time right now where this is about to happen all over again. Okay. And I just do this lesson to encourage you all to just continue to build on that faith and believe. Cast that doubt to the side. Screw that doubt. It's easy to happen. We're in this flesh, you know, but don't entertain it. Especially in these times right now. Where, again, as I stated earlier, if you look at it according to the flesh, it looks like a loss. These people in the world have no idea what to do next, but we have the idea. We expected a miracle. All right. So, yeah, this was done right here. And then when you continue in verse six, it says, then shall the lame man leap as in heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. Now, reading this makes me think of what happened in the book of Acts, the third chapter. After those men received that spiritual power in the upper room, when those fires came down from the heavens and that rushing wind. Hit the upper room, okay? When they spoke those tongues, when you go into the next chapter, it goes into how Peter and John spoke to that lame man that sat outside of um, Solomon's porch, which is called Beautiful, all right? And pretty much feeble knees were strengthened up, and he was raised up and started leaping. That was a miracle. But those men were bold in the faith, and they believed it would take place. And that lame man that sat out there believed it as well. If he didn't believe it, he wouldn't have been he wouldn't have raised his hand up to get up. He was curious enough just to see what these men was talking about. OK, and the irony of it, he was sitting outside the temple. All right. Where the glory of the Lord dwelt. All right. Now, the glory of the Lord rests within us. Even in John 14, our Lord, Yahweh Shai said, if any man love my father and love me, my father and myself shall come into that man and make our abode with him. Meaning that the temple is within you. The glory of the Lord is within you. And since the glory of the Lord is within you, he can use you in whatever way he sees fit. Regardless, he's using everybody anyway. But I'm talking about on that type of level. All right. However, the Lord sees fit to use you in the way of righteousness. He, 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 he can do it. OK. But what's your expectation? All right. 
So jumping back to Isaiah 35 and 5, it says, I'm sorry, verse 6. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Now, what does this mean? In the wilderness, water shall spring out and streams of desert. That means in the places that you would not even think of you being nourished and taken care of, it can take place because the Lord operates outside of what we perceive in the flesh as reality. And these are the times that we're approaching right now. So if you lose your job for whatever the case is, it's all good. You're going to be taken care of. If it's to the point where you got to leave your home, you ain't going to be able to take all that food with you. But expect manna to come down from heaven. Now, I'm not saying literally, but have your mind set big. The Lord will sustain us and take care of us. We just have to believe that, man. Miracles are coming. That's ultimately what I'm saying in this lesson. And I use these different examples to show you. Believe. Just believe. Only believe. Crazy faith is necessary. Mountains ain't going to be moved unless you have crazy faith. So I'm going to end it off there. Lord's willingness is edifying to the point a little longer than I expected, but I'm um, all according to the spirit. But I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, HaKadosh. Double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom. Believe and only believe.